United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. God bless you. This is the day that God has given us, and today is a very special day. Uh, there's some things that uh, we truly believe that God has put on our heart ever since the day that uh, he joined us together. And I want to, I don't want to waste any more time with it. Um, today, it's myself. Uh, my name is Derek Hudson. My wife and I, we're pastors of a church in Juarez named Templo Roca Fuerte. It's in Spanish, but you're more than welcome uh, to, to come there. There's something that God has for you. Uh, today, we have a special message. It's in regards to issues that, that are happening right now in, the, in this day in the lives of everyone. But I, I think that everybody is not really aware of what's going on. So before we begin, um, let's uh, put it in the hands of the Lord and have a word of prayer. Father, in this moment, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for all that you have done for us and the way you've been merciful to us, your grace upon us. And in this day, it's no exception. I ask you in this moment to forgive us for what's not pleasing to you, our words, our attitudes, our actions, the things, Lord, that do not please you. Forgive us, Father. And we commit this time to you, Lord. I pray, Father, for the word that will come out, that it be of you, that there not be any misunderstanding, and I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that through your word, that your people, each of us, have a deeper relationship with you from what you speak to us from your word. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, Lord. Today, um, there's a lot of things happening. And as I stated in the beginning, <coughs> there's a lot of things that people are unaware of as to why the things happen the way they do. But what I truly believe is that if we take the time to listen to what God is saying, and if we open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, I think that the Lord will speak to us of what we need to do. Um, I'm reading in the book of Malachi, uh, and in the book of Malachi, uh, chapter 2, and there's a couple of verses that speak to uh, what, what we're talking about right now. But I want to begin, if we go to Malachi chapter 1, I want to begin with just the first verse because when I read it, it spoke to me as to what God put on our heart. The, the word of God says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. And when that word burden, when I saw that word burden, that word jumped out to me because it speaks of someone carrying something, a, a heavy load, and it's something that is so real. And with this right here, what we're going to talk about, it's a burden that the Lord has put on my heart. It's a burden that the Lord has put on my wife's heart. And, and, I, and I think that everybody has a burden, and it could be for different, different things. But for ours, it's in regards to this subject that we're going to talk about. And this subject that we're talking about specifically is in regards to marriage and family. Now, when we read in the, the Word of God, we want to read in Malachi chapter 2, verse 13 through verse 16. And God says in his Word, And this ye have done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, with crying out, insomuch that he regarded not the offering any more, and receiveth, receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath, witness, hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet hath he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one? That he might seek godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hateth putting away for 
one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. Now, this is in the King James Version. And just to give you a background of what it's talking about. Chapter two talks about two things that God has established. The first thing God established was ministry. And when we read in the book of, of Exodus and Leviticus, it speaks about the regulations and how God wanted the things to be done as far as worship, even as far as the temple and how, how uh, the tabernacle, excuse me, and how things were to be done and the rules and how the priests were to govern themselves. And when we read in Malachi chapter two, from verse one, all the way to verse 11, uh, verse 10, rather, it's talking about how they violated that, how they just went doing their own thing. But when we read in these verses that we're talking about right here from 13 to verse 16, it's focusing on marriage. Now, it's interesting that God is talking about this because he established marriage all the way back in Genesis. That's that was something God established from the beginning when he when he created everything. And he when we read in those books that I mentioned in the book of Exodus and in the book of Leviticus, he gave rules, he gave regulations, he gave uh, laws as, that were to govern his people. But somewhere down the line, his people just veered off the path from it. They just got away from it. And this is what he's talking about here. In another version, in the NIV, it says in verse 13, and this is the second thing you do. When he says the second thing you do, he had already covered the first thing that they did, which was in regards to ministry, in regards to what they were supposed to do, in regards to their relationship with the Lord. And I believe that a lot of the problems that are existent in this, in this world today is because of those two things. The people have turned away from God, and the people have turned away from what God established, mainly marriage. And he says right here in this verse, in verse 13, and this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. So he does not regard the offering anymore, nor perceive it with goodwill from your hands. And it's almost to the point where the person is walking with the Lord and whatever they try to do, it just doesn't work out. Whatever they try to do, it's they run into a, a roadblock. They run into a wall and it's like... Why is this happening? And this person that we're talking about is the person that's in the Lord. And they don't understand as to why the things are happening the way they are. One of the reasons it's happening the way they are is because of this. Because God says that in his word, when we look in verse 14, he gives the reason why. He tells why. You know, we can go through the motions. We can go to church. We can sing. We can even minister. And this is applicable to all of us. We can do all of these things and we can carry the name of someone who believes in God. But when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, especially as husbands and wives, when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, it doesn't matter to the Lord because we're not doing our part. And he says right here, he gives us the answer as to why he doesn't. Uh, answer us why we don't have the answers to our prayers why when we try to uh, step out to do something why we don't have success with it he says yet you say for what reason how many times do we ask the Lord Lord I don't get it Lord why when we're when we're in prayer or we're we're talking to our brother and sister in the Lord and we're saying we're believing God for this one thing and and to this point it hasn't happened this is why God is telling us right here. He says, yet you say, for what reason? And God answers, because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of, of your youth with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. And basically, it's a question that we have to ask. You know, if you are married, you know, whether it's been for two months or for 20 years or for 50 years, whatever the time period that y'all have been together, you know, we have to ask this question. How have we treated each other? How have we honestly treated each other? You know, God holds marriage in, in, on a high level. He, that was one of the first things he established. So it's not something that he's just going to brush off if we treat it like, like it's nothing. And that's what was happening here. And yet the people thought they were okay because they knew 
the regulations. They knew what God had established and they were doing the things their way. But God was showing them that this is not acceptable. And he's showing them here why when they pray or why when they offered their uh, when they made their offerings and their sacrifices, why he wasn't accepting it. And we need to be very mindful of how we treat our, our spouses, how we treat our, our, our husbands, our wives, you know, and I'm talking between man and a woman. Let's get that established right now. The marriage is between man and a woman. It's not between woman and woman and man and man. The Bible doesn't teach us that. And it's something that we need to see it for what it is. Now, before I go on, I want to uh, pass it to uh, my, my wife, Esther, so that she can share her, her thoughts and comments on this, because it is something that since Bef when we got married, you know, it was something that I want to share with you that God put on our heart that he joined us for that reason, for marriages and for families. And we can give you testimonies of of how through the years God has restored marriages and families, not because of us, but because of him using us because of what he has put in our heart. Now, Esther, um, Again, uh, I pass it to you so that you can share your thoughts and uh, comments on, on, on this issue, this real issue that we face today regarding marriage and family. We found some parallel verses in Genesis when God established, talking about the, the institution that God has established since the beginning is a marriage institution. It is really interesting and important to understand the society, the fundamental for a, for a good society is established by marriage. That's why we see so many problems today, these days in, in family, where, where the children are suffering with the family problems, with the uh, couple marriage, the misunderstanding, the, the things that we, that we look in this day, this is scary. I was looking in the statistics in the United States about the marriage and divorce, and it's very scary that today, as uh, 2013, uh, we find out that 40 to 50 percent of marriages, marriage couples in the United States had divorced. And to that extent, we, that's what we see our society is not really firm now because this is affecting not just the couple, but when we think about when the couple, they have children, we see other issues that we're not gonna be talking right now, but just to, to give you an idea how the things are in the statistics of, even with the second marriages, um, those who, who remarry, or at least you say, in 2013, 40% uh, of new marriages at least have been married uh, before. This means almost 42 million Ameri Americans have been married more than once. What I wanna share with you is in Genesis, we, we found out this, how the Lord established the marriage and this is talking about the institution, the godly institution, because today even even for that we have different opinions and even laws that are changing in, in the United States and not only in the United States but around the world. And we can see if we go to the basic, if we go to the foundation and, and how can this can this be prosper and have a better society and in establishment in our cities, countries, and, and around the world, we can see in the Bible, God establishes, and he said in Genesis 2, verse 20, 20, 22, it says, The Lord God had made a woman from the rib. He had taken out the man, and he brought her to the man, the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She has been called woman, for she has taken out all men. Verse 24, 
For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and will be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Verse 25 says, The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. When we see this, we see in the beginning, the man and the woman were even naked, and, and they, were, they were free. They were completely transparent to each other, and this tells us how good the relationship was in the beginning with, between the, the man and the woman. And today, in these days, it's a lot of things that interfere in this, this communication, this relationship, and sadly, we have a, a materialistic uh, society today that is, is taking so much away from, from this this relationship and 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 the ending, in the end we we see the results because even the couple there, they don't have that good communication. Maybe the man is working. Maybe the case the woman has to work too. Sometimes the the time together is so limited. Then we can see that it's a lot of things interfering this this relationship, and at the end. The solution is just, well, we cannot continue together. We cannot understand each other. We, we have so many problems that the easy way is, well, let's divorce. And that's, that's, that's a problem today. And, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because when we look at it, it's not what God intended, you know, in the, in the beginning. You know, in the, in the beginning, you know, God said that it's not good that man be alone. And when we read Genesis, everything starts in Genesis. You know, God created everything, and God said, I will make a helper suitable for him, you know, for this man that is, that is by himself. You know, God was looking at him. God knew what he needed. You know, God knows what we need. We need to understand that. And I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. God knows what we need. And yet, in this day, Esther, there, there are people that feel like they know what they need. You know, they feel like they can satisfy themselves. You know, when we read Genesis, the Bible says that God created all these animals, right? And God brought, them, brought these animals to the man, and the man named them. But the Bible also says that no suitable helper was, was, was found for him. Now, I, I have nothing against um, those who have pets. Uh, we have pets, but the pets have their place. They have their place in the home. But yet, today, there are where the pet is placed in a higher level than man. And more care is given to the, to the, to the animal than it is to man. And I don't care what way we look at it, that animal has its place, you know, and that animal cannot speak a response to us in a way that we can understand. You know, God knows that, and that's why he calls man to fall asleep. You know, sometimes we got to be out of the picture so that God can do the work. You know what I mean? It's to the point where we just try so hard to make things work, and we're just making it worse. But in this case here, God calls Adam to fall asleep. And the Bible says he took a rib and closed it up. And from that rib, God made what the man needed. You know, your wife that you have is what you need. Your husband that you have is what you need. And God joined you two together. God joined us together. You know, my wife and I, we're from two different parts of the world. You know, she's from Mexico. I'm from Florida. What are the chances of that happening? But there's no, nothing too impossible for God. You know, God can do anything. And in his time, he joined us together and he, he prepared us up until that point. So when we were, when we met, we knew that God had something for us. And that's what we need to understand that when, when God joined man and woman together, it's not just, you know, just for show. You know, it's for a purpose. And when we look at this right here, 
the people, they got away from that. They got away from that purpose that God had, had for them. And they broke that promise, that vow that they made with each other. That vow is, is for life. It was a covenant that they entered in into. You know, when we think about a wedding, you know, the wedding has a lot of people there. And the wedding has that minister in the front. That minister is the representative of God. And those, those people there, they're witnesses. They see it taking place. And, and traditionally, you have the aisle. And you have a group of people on the right and a group of people on the left. And the bride walks down the middle. By that bride walking down the middle, all of that is symbolic. But a lot of people, they don't know that. They're entering into, they're entering into a covenant with God. And God is, has his minister, his servant right there conducting that ceremony. It is not just, okay, you know, I join you, so-and-so, husband and wife, and holy matrimony. It's not just that. It's these people, they're, they're entering into a covenant before God. And somehow, it's, they've gotten away from that. And God is bringing everybody back to it. Now, I think, uh, Esther, that if, if we really just take the time to, to look at how God does the things, um, I think that the things will get better if we do our part, you know, especially in regards to marriage. You know, you're talking about two people that are completely different, you know, working together for the same purpose. And the only one who can make those things come together is the Lord. That's why it's important that the both know the Lord. I think that if, if both know the Lord, it's a lot easier because when it's where the husband doesn't know the Lord, and we know of many cases like that, and the wife, she knows the Lord, she knows what the promises are. She knows how the things are supposed to be, but she's carrying that burden, you know, as we read in the beginning. She's carrying the burden for the family. She's carrying that spiritual burden, and the husband, he doesn't know, or vice versa, where the husband, he knows the Lord, and, and his wife doesn't know the Lord. And, and, it, and it's harder because the Lord is not Lord over that person's life. That person is not completely submitted to the Lord. Now, there's been cases where one was saved and the other one got saved and the Lord began to use them, you know, both together down the road and anything is possible with the Lord. What God is talking about here is for those who knew what they were doing, you know, they knew they got married, they knew they entered into a, a, a covenant, but yet down the road, they just kind of turned away from it. Down the road, they just kind of veered off. Now, when we go back to those verses in Malachi, God says that in verse 15, but did he not make them one, having a remnant of the spirit? And why one? It's a question we got to ask. Why did God join us together? You know, why are we married? You know, what are we here for? You know, for my wife and I, we know and we see it. We see it when the Lord begins to move in the lives of the, the families that are going through problems, the marriages that are on the brink of divorce, where they're on the brink of just being separated. God says that, and why one? He seeks godly offer, offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none, of, none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. He joined them together so that the two can become one. And the product of them to the two becoming one are the children. And those children can grow up knowing the Lord because the parents know the Lord. The parents can teach those children in the ways of the Lord. Now, it's something that do we see happening today? Not much. Uh, we see a lot of the opposite. Uh, we hear of a lot of the violence that takes place in the schools. We hear of a lot of uh, a lot of the problems that are in the schools with the kids. And I truly believe everything starts in the home. Um, Esther, uh, we have a couple of minutes uh, before we finish. We have a, a few minutes. So uh, you have any other comments you want to add to this? Yes, just to think about it, if we realize God is a perfect God, right? Everybody, we are perfect. But we, we believe that God knows what he does. And he's in what he does. He has a purpose. It's more than 
yes, yes, everything just appeared as other theories say, even about the creation. When God created man and woman, he did it with a purpose. When God establishes the, the, the institution about marriage, it's with a purpose. We just see it. sometimes God has put in something on men that the woman doesn't have. And it's, it, it's a reason why he joined us together because all of us, we have our role in marriage, in the family, in the society. And if we do that, if we fulfill our purpose, then we will have a better society, we will have a better world, and we will have a healthier families and, and children. And, and this is real important for us to understand. And in all, in all of this, if, we, if God created in us and God established in marriage, then we need the Lord. And I will say we need this foundation. We need to, to know the Bible. We need to know his, his promises. We need to know what he wants from us and what is her purpose, not only in marriage, but even in life. And, you know, the last thing here is God says in verse 16, and he states his position in regards to marriage. He says, for the Lord God of Israel says, this is what God says, that he hates divorce. For it is covering one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Or in other words, that you're not being faithless or unfaithful or disloyal or false to what you vowed you would do. For many people, as Esther mentioned, divorce is the easy way out. But what a lot of people don't realize is the consequences of it and the people that are affected by it. It's not just the person. And I, and I think divorce, this is just my own opinion, I think divorce is selfish because it's what that person uh, wants to do to get away from it. But there's a way that even in, in God's word, he, 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 he shows us when divorce is permitted. But I also believe that even in those cases, we have seen it where God shows his power, where he restores. So if that is you today that has not been faithful to what you vowed to the Lord, you haven't been faithful to your spouse, make this today that where you look your spouse in the eye and you say, forgive me. And where the two of you come to the Lord and where the two of you just come to the Lord and you ask the Lord to first forgive you for what you have done and the way things have been. And you ask the Lord to restore. And I truly believe that if you are sincere with it, the Lord is able to do, to do it in your life. Today has been a day that God used this word to speak on marriage and family. And we're going to continue talking about it at the next program. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may he be with you. God bless you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.